Praise the Lord. Uh, church, we are in the eighth lesson. And uh, we have been through a lot of uh, lessons now regarding how to grow in your Christian life, in your salvation. And uh, we have been learning about the Holy Spirit, to learn about the baptism, to get to baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is uh, which happened during uh, the day of Pentecost that the, the Holy Spirit came. In Acts 1.8, it came uh, like a rushing wind and uh, filled all the believers in the upper room where this no where they were gathered and all of them speak no spoke in a new tongue and the power of God was upon them and the Lord said to them that do not depart just stay in Jerusalem until the promise is given unto you that was a promise of God that do not go, do not go your mission, do not go to, uh, to evangelize, do not go away, stay in Jerusalem and wait for the promise that the Father will give you. And they waited and God sent them the Holy Spirit. When Jesus Christ rise up, you know, when Jesus was on earth, He cannot be in a, uh, another place at the same time. You understand what I mean? You know, that's why he needed to send, to send the Holy Spirit in order for the Holy Spirit to be free in everywhere. Amen. When Jesus was in Galilee, he was not in Jerusalem. When he was in uh, Judea, he was not in Samaria. So when the Holy Spirit came, he can be at all places at the same time. So that's why the Lord said that it is good for you that I will send the Comforter. So that's why right now, Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit is in the Philippines, is in America, is everywhere, and He is right here in the midst of this church. Amen. Amen. So that's why you need to, uh, to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that you feel the presence of the Lord while we are singing praises and worship before, you, before Him. And the second part of uh, uh, the baptism is the baptism through water. Amen. That when you are baptized or immersed in the water, Meaning you die with Christ, and when you rise up from the water, you live with Him into a new life. So that is your uh, that is your declaration to the world that hey, I am a Christian. Amen. If you are not baptized, I encourage you to be baptized with water. And uh, this is just a reminder that baptism of water will not save you, or will it's not a part of your salvation. It is just uh, you know. Fulfillment of all righteousness. Amen. So, first of all, you have been baptized in the Spirit. That's what counts most. Amen. Yun po yung tinitinan ng Panginoon yung we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Where we are being born again. And the Spirit of God dwells in us. And from that time, we, we are, our names are written in the Book of Life. And it will be followed by baptism. Because we want to be clear to the world that I am a follower of Jesus. Amen. So in lesson 8, we'll be studying about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. So the Lord is not uh, interested in uh, behavior modification. Amen. He's not interested in you modifying your behavior. Like, I want to be good, I want to do like this, I want to, to, uh, to go straight. I want... No, God is not interested in behavior modification, but God is interested in life transformation. Amen. So if you want to serve the Lord, do not allow to, do not think that, uh, now that I'm a Christian, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to do this, I need to do that. Yes, I believe in it. But the thing is, the Holy Spirit will work in you, and then the fruit will just come out naturally. Amen. You don't need to, uh, to struggle like, Pastor, I want to be good. I want to be perfect in every step. If you do that, you will fail. <laughs> you are bound to fail. And you are bound to, uh, to just, you know, hurting yourself. But the thing right now that we are going to study is about the fruit of the Spirit. It is found in Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22 to 23. And I want to read this uh, with, uh, with you. Now Galatians chapter 5, 
verse 22 to 23 later all together. Let's go. But the fruit of spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, 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 self-control against such things no more. Amen. So the Bible says the fruit of the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit is love. So, meaning the fruit of the Spirit, as we describe it, the fruit of the Spirit is the direct result of the life of Christ flowing and manifesting in His believer. So, this characteristic is the character of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, when the Holy Spirit dwells in you, the character of Jesus will be seen in you. Amen. You know what is the character of Jesus? He has everything. He is love. Amen. He has joy. He has peace. You know, uh, when, when the disciples was with Jesus and they were boarded uh, the vessel and they wanted to go to another side of the lake and there was a storm. You know what happened? All the disciples, they are panicking. They are only we will die and they are crying, they are uh, they're, uh, they're afraid. You know what Jesus is doing? Alam niyo ang ginagawa ni Jesus Christ? He was sleeping. He was sleeping in the corner, along the bottom of the ship. He was there sleeping without uh, bothering about what is happening around him. Because Jesus was peaceful. And all the people, ang mga disciples niya, ano nangyayari? They are and he's shouting, what will happen? We will die. And all of them are crying. And all of them are panicked. They are not panic. It's like, it's the end of the world. <laughs> and all the people, there, they want to, they are very, you know, they are confused. Why Jesus, our, our, our master, why he was there lying, sleeping, and they wake up Jesus. Jesus, please wake up. Please help us. <laughs> And what Jesus did, he said, come. And the waves and the storm and the, you know, the big uh, waves, they obeyed Jesus. Because Jesus is the God of the storm. Amen. And he has peace. And he has also no suffering. Jesus has suffered a lot. But he suffered it without saying anything. You know, you know what happened to Jesus? He's a God. And actually he became a man. Amen. In order to identify himself with man, with you and me. Because when God will appear here right now as a God, he cannot be identified as a man. So Jesus came to this world as a man, and at the same time, he's God. But he left his God, you know, his character, his nature being God, he left it in heaven. And he removed the, 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 uh, the robe of his, uh, of his Godhead and went to earth and identified with us. And you know, when, when Jesus was on earth, he was betrayed, he was given such kind of judgment that anyone will never have. You know, he was given to be crucified and he was mocked you know, in, in the center, uh, and in the midst of the people, the people of Israel. Uh, of Israel. He was mocked, he was uh, uh, given a lot of punishment, but you can never hear him say anything. He suffered. That is what we call long suffering. Amen. For us, even we are Christians, you know, when, when somebody will uh, hit us, when somebody will talk against us, what, what is our reaction? Immediately, we burst out. And we are start, start like, like, we want to have war already. Right? When somebody did something wrong in you, <laughs> in us, especially when we are doing good, and somebody uh, made a story that is not true. And then what will happen? Our, our reaction always, we make Facebook. <laughs> we put in Facebook our feeling, I'm feeling sad, I'm very annoyed, feeling, uh, I'm feeling like this. And everything, and all the people will say, ah, he's feeling sad, and all the people are happy. You know? And this is what happened. You know, Jesus, when Jesus was beaten, he was mocked, he was, uh, uh, he was ridiculed in front of the people, he didn't say anything. No, he didn't even open his mouth to curse them. You know, one of the, one of the two 
thieves. He said, Jesus, you're God. Why not help me? <laughs> help yourself. I help us also. Why you're not saying anything? He just closed his mouth. Let the, let the will of God let the will of God flow. Yes. And this is the quality of Jesus Christ. He is long suffering and kindness. When Jesus is going to uh, the Rome of Damascus, going to Judea, Samaria, all the people was there, they are sick. And they are looking at Jesus, they are waiting for him to pass by. And when Jesus will see them, God with kindness, he will heal them. And he will uh, do everything the people are telling him to do. Goodness was with Jesus. Faithfulness was with Jesus. And gentleness and self-control. So the thing that is in you when you are filled with the Holy Spirit is the character of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You want to be like Jesus? Just be filled with the Holy Spirit. And this, uh, this uh, fruit will just come out naturally. So, why is this called the fruit of the Spirit? Why is that called the fruits of the Spirit? Right? It is called the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Meaning, this is one character. You cannot remove, like, the fruit of the Spirit is love only. But without joy, without no suffering, no. The fruit of the Spirit is nine qualities. And all this fruit will automatically come out when you are filled with the Spirit of God. It is the very nature of Christ which He wants to be produced and revealed through us. It can be described in these three, no, in these uh, three different aspects. One fruit, nine qualities. Amen. It's like a bunch of uh, fruit. <coughs> like, tawatin nito siguro fruit salad. <laughs> Right? Maraming uh, nine, nine fruits in one salad. So that is uh, the character that God wants to uh, reveal in you or to put into your life. So one fruit, nine qualities. This, are, this is only one fruit of the Spirit. But it embodies, you know, the wonderful qualities of a person of our Lord Jesus Christ. So one fruit, that not done the salad. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and suffering, gentleness, meekness, goodness, faithfulness, gentle, and self-control. And this is the fruit of the Spirit. Look, the fruit comes only from the Holy Spirit. You cannot expect people to produce this fruit if there is something bad inside. If, it's, uh, no, if there is pride, if there is uh, you know, jealousy, if there is rebellion in the life of the person, if there is bad intentions, you cannot see these fruits because it will, uh, it will destroy these fruits in you. Because this fruit only comes from the Holy Spirit and it will produce only through the Holy Spirit. You know, working in the lives of a believer or Christian. So the end result, if you are being filled with the Holy Spirit, the end result is the fruit. It will just come out. Sino may mangga sa inyo? If you have mango tree, your rambutan, or uh, tambi, santol, you know, when, uh, pero most of the thing we, we put fertilizer is uh, yung mangga, di ba? When we have a mango tree, and you have a farm, or a, a mango farm, so, uh, you will put fertilizer. You know, yung, and then you will spray, diba? You begin to spray a chemical that will produce fruit with that mango tree. So after a while, the chemical will process in the system of the mango tree, and later on, the fruit will just come out. So it's the same with our Christian life. Don't Just be filled with the Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to just move into your life. Allow your, your life to be sprayed with the Holy Spirit. Sino mag spray sa atin? God. He will shower us with His Holy Spirit. And He will spray us. Di lang natin alam, but the Lord wants us to be filled. So, when we are filled, 
Do not uh, overdo things. It will just happen naturally. Amen. Amen. When you are an unbeliever, marami mga unbelievers that they are already good, no? They are good outside. But in the inside, sometimes something is wrong. So marami mga kilala ko, I have, I know a, a lot of people, they are good if you are good to them. Amen? Amen. Some people that are really good, they will do good things for you if you are good to them. But if you did something wrong, they will be bad as enemy, as, as bad as they can. So that is not the quality of a Christian because a Christian with being filled with the Holy Spirit, it will produce good fruits. Amen. It will produce good fruit into your, upon your life. So the fruit, number three, number one is the fruit is uh, one fruit, nine qualities. Number two, the fruit comes from the Holy Spirit. And number three, this fruit is a sign of maturity. So when you see this fruit into a life, into the life of, of a believer, you can see that this sister, this brother, is already mature. Only a mature tree bears fruit. Amen. Amen. Hindi ka maka, don't expect that a young tree, mango tree, will bear fruit. Only a mature mango tree will produce fruit. Only a mature tree will produce fruit. So when you are mature, then the fruit will come out. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when you are young and innocent, you will not produce fruit. So it is an encouragement for us to grow in our Christian life. Do not remain as, as a baby mango, <laughs> baby, uh, baby banana. It will, not it will not produce fruit. So you need to grow. Then when you, when, you, when you grow, this fruit will be produced by you. Because this is a sign of maturity. You know, people who are mature, they really, you can see them. You know, they are refined in their language. They are refined in their actions. Right? But immature people, you know, immature people can react, right? Childish. You know childish people? <laughs> Just these people. Then when some somebody will talk against them, they will just say, uh, right, like babies, not like children. But mature people are refined. When you talk to them, they will give you wisdom. When you uh, when you see them, you will be blessed because they are mature. They there's they, they choose you know, their words. They don't just say anything that will hurt people. Binipili niya ano yung sasabihin niya. Amen. And he will plan. He will plan to develop. Not only in the, you know, in physical, but also in, in life. You know, mature people, they plan. They plan how to, uh, to save money. They plan how to invest. They plan how to uh, put investment in the, in the country. These are mature people. But immature people, I buy, I buy a lot of gadget, I'll buy a lot of things, and then later on, nothing happens. This is immature. Amen? But mature people, they, they put their focus on things that will bring them into higher level of their lives. These are mature people. So, I, I'm telling you this because in, Christ, in our Christian life, it's the same. You cannot go to church from, uh, from uh, age like 7, 8, then after 20 years, you're still, <laughs> you feel like you're still 7 years old, 8 years old. And then you, you just play your spiritual life, just go to church, I'm not going to church today, I go to church, I want to go to church. No, mature people will continue. They will find a way in order for them to serve the Lord. Amen. So that is, I'm telling you this because in, in our Christian life, we have to mature. And the fruit of the Holy Spirit will come out when you are mature. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, one of the quality of the fruit of the Spirit is love. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3 to 8, love, what does it say in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3 to 8? This is, talks about love. 
Bene. Okay. It says that love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puff up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. It's not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoice in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophets, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there are knowledge, it will vanish away. But say, love, this is perfect love. And who is having this love? Only God. Only God have this kind of love. You know, sometimes we call it stubborn love. You know, you know the song of Sadi Lati that is stubborn love? It's a stubborn love that never let go of me. So when you see the lyrics, God is stubborn love, will not let go of you. <laughs> no, will not let you go. That is stubborn love. Even if we sin, even if we do uh, bad things in our Christian life, even if we disobey Him, even if we go other way, what is the Lord is doing? He will not let you go. <laughs> he will just hold you back and carry you again. Whenever you on the dapaka, you fall, God will carry you through and He will bring you to, to His arms. That's the love of God. So love is like this. You know, love is a decision. Love is not a feeling. It is a decision. It is a decision to give oneself to others for their good. It is a decision when God gave Jesus because the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So, God loved us. That's why He gave His only begotten Son. So it is a decision, it's not a feeling that I feel like loving the world. Jesus, uh, God did not feel it. But it's, it is His decision. Why? Because He knew that if He will not give His Son, all the people of this world will be destroyed, will be in the lake of fire, will go to hell. So God in His decision showed His love for His, for his creation, for, his, for us, His creation. He loved us with an everlasting love and He sent Jesus. It is a decision for you, for the others. Now it's not only for me. Sometimes it's, it's easy to love people who are lovable, right? When they're lovable, it's, it's so easy. I love him or I love her because I, he's doing good things to me. But how about if a people or if a person is doing bad things to you? Will you love him? If he's your enemy, are you going to love him? No. <laughs> no way, Pastor. I will not love that enemy. I will curse him. <laughs> but the Bible says, love your enemies. You know, Jesus Christ, or God Himself, when we were yet sinners, while we were yet unlovable, when we were yet in the world, when we do things out of our own pleasure, He already loved us. Amen. That is the love of God. It is the decision of Him to send His only Son in order for us to be rescued from the hell, from hell, from the everlasting punishment. It is a decision. And agape love is the highest form of love. Amen. Amen. We have agape love. That is love, the love of God. Amen. And there is what we call eros love. Eros love is an erotic uh, love between a girl and a man. That's erotic. Eros love. And philia, philia or philia love it is a love between uh, family members. And agape love is the love of God. So we can identify these things, this love, but the greatest kind of love is agape. Agape love is unconditional love. Amen. Sometimes eros love, you know, erotic love, when, when a woman loves a woman a man, they will show uh, you know, emotions. They have erotic emotions. They go to for day and the man will prepare flowers. Uh, chocolates, uh, gifts, in order to please the woman. 
right? And the woman also loved the man. He will buy a, a watch. She will buy new shoes for basketball. <laughs> she will buy t-shirt. For the for the man, this is erotic love. <laughs> but sometimes it is conditional. You know what? When the woman does not do his action anymore, the woman will get angry, right? I will not love you. If you are not love me, I will not love you. Because love is reciprocated. Uh, this is the uh, right for husband and wife. If you love me, I will love him. If you will not love me, by the way, go. No, that is conditional. Right? And sometimes failure also. Uh, sometimes failure, there is a characteristic of the failure love that sometimes it is also agape. The love of your mother or your father. Even if your children are, you know, hard hidden, they love them. But that is only failure. Sometimes uh, parents also will disregard their children. Especially when their children disobey them a lot. And they are making trouble. The community, they are already a member of a, of a gang. So this thing, the parents will, will uh, back off and they will tell, allow the, these children to go to prison. But in the church, the agape love is unconditional. The agape love is the love of God. It is unconditional. There is no condition. If you, the Lord, if you love Him, fine. If you don't love the Lord, He still loves you. Amen. Amen. You, are, you are faithful to God, then God is faithful to you. When you are unfaithful to God, God is still faithful to you. This is, this is the Lord. This is, this, this is the love in Him. This is the love that is unconditional. Alam niyo kapag unfailing love, unfailing love. So, when unfailing love means it does not have any qualification. That is the love of God. So, sometimes we, you feel that, Lord, am I acceptable before you? Uh, diba? Ganun tinatanong natin sa Panginoon. When we go to church, Lord, am I worthy before you? Then the Lord will tell you, yes, my son, or yes, my daughter. You are worthy because of your faith. So the Lord will not put any qualification or any uh, style. Before I will love you, please do this. No. The Lord loves even the worst sinner in this world. If he understands the love of God, he will go to the Lord and say, Lord, God, thank you. Because even if I am the worst sinner, you still love me. You still have, you know, you still, uh, you came for me to die for me. Thank you, Lord, for your love. And because you love me, Lord, I will love you. So our response to the love of God is, Lord, yes, I love you, Lord. But I need to do things for you, right? You can love without giving, but uh, you can give without loving, I mean. But you cannot love without giving. So when you love the Lord, God, you will give everything to Him. Amen. Your time, your uh, talents, your finances, what that belongs to the Lord, you will give it to, the, to Him. Because you love the Lord. Amen. You're my boyfriend, but you're <coughs> my boyfriend or husband and wife, diba? Before you may get married, dumaan kayo dun sa tinatawag na courtship, right? Kung may mga asawa na sa atin dito, when you are, before you get married, you, you like a woman because in our country we don't have arranged marriages <laughs> we only have uh, love marriages so when you love a woman or love a man what you'll do you will court you have a courtship stage so the man will, uh, uh, will please the woman so he will show the good side of him he will show everything good to the woman in order for the woman to be convinced that this man is the right man for me okay and after that, I will say yes. yes. And after saying yes, they get married and you will have children and you will have family. So that is the love of, you know, of uh, people. And we cannot deny it. That is also happening every time. Amen. So, let's go back to the, to the love that the Lord is giving to us. Love has, is a decision that is giving to us. It is a decision. So what love is that? What love is that? This is a qualification that is not called love. Tingnan ko ninyo. 
Love is not just doing good works for others. Love is not just doing good works for others. If you are only doing good works for others, it is not love only. You can do good works without love. Amen. For example, there is a, a, a person in a higher position, like he's a mayor or a senator. He's doing good uh, uh, laws and uh, uh, bill. He passed the Senate and it could uh, give uh, good result for the people. Because he said that he loved the people, right? But when he go home, he beat his wife. Sino pa rin asawa niya, yung anak niya, pinabayaan niya. So that is not love. If you are doing, generally, the people will say, Ah, this senator is very good. This mayor is very good. This politician is very good. Because he's doing good for the community. But you don't know, when he, when he went home, he will beat his wife, and he will beat his children. That is not love. Doing good things only is not love. Another thing, love is not just a feeling. Right? Love is not just feeling good toward others. Oh, I feel good to be this brother. So I will give him everything. I will feel good with his sister. So it's not, it's not just a feeling. Number three, love is not a license to do to do bad things. No, I love you. I will smack you because I love you. I can do this because I love you. And even people compromise their their uh, their lives. No, sometimes you know because of too much love. Sabi ka nila too much love will kill you. You know, there are people who die because of love, right? Some, some people, they, they commit suicide because they love a person. No, last, yesterday, I, I read one uh, news in the Philippines. She's a 20 years old teacher of the Department of Education. She's beautiful. She is uh, already have a, you know, a position in the government. She's a teacher. And she was depressed because of the boyfriend. And what he did? He, she hung himself. And she died. She hung himself and put a note there. To my boyfriend. I love you. But goodbye. Is it love? No, it's not love. No. Is, it, is it a license? No. I love you and I will, I will kill myself because I love you. It's not love. It's not a license to do, to do things because you love a person. No. Like, if you love someone, if you love a friend, or if you love a sister in the church, or if you love a brother in the church, do not put, you know, chocolate in front of him. <laughs> you wrap him candy. Ah, what good brother, you're a good sister. You're very, very good. And whenever the sister left, the sister is crazy. The sister is crazy. Yes, yes. Do not do it. If you love a person, the open rebuke is better than secret love. The Bible says, better to rebuke him when he commits sin, when you need to make something wrong, if he's doing bad things to other people, rebuke him in front of him. You know, a true friend will rebuke. Amen. A true friend will tell his friend that, brother, sister, you're doing wrong. But if a brother is telling you, it's okay, it's okay. Are doing right, it's okay with you. <laughs> then later on, he found out that this is wrong with Jaya. And it's okay. No, if somebody is doing bad things, you tell him, Brother, you are doing bad things. That's how you show your love. But if you will tolerate him, for example, uh, you have a friend who is taking drugs. <laughs> He's taking drugs, and this drug is prohibited. And when he tell you, brother, please take drugs. Yes. I'm okay with that. I will not take drugs. You're okay with you, but how about this brother? How about him? 
just send him off. You're like, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> you're destroying your life. It's okay with you. But for me, I'm done. Do you love him? No. no. If you love a person, tell him, brother, this is wrong. Do not do it. Amen. That is love. Do not show love that it's okay. You know, you have children. You have to spank them. You have to hit them with the rod. If you love them. But if you don't love them, okay, children, go whatever you want. But if you love your children, you have to, the Bible says, something in the Bible, uh, strength, uh, strengthen a child in the way he should go. You know, give him direction. Because if, if, if a tree is already grown up, you cannot mold the tree. You know? So when the tree is still small, you can uh, you want to you want the tree to go like this, just pull something. And then go like this, you pull something, and it will follow you. And you will become a tree, it will be as what you want. But if it's already a tree and you want to do like this, it will crack, it will be broken, it will be destroyed. Yes. So if you love a person, do not compromise. Amen. Amen. Do not compromise. Do not allow him to do bad things with your permission. Because you love him. Tell him, brother, wrong. <laughs> mistake. <laughs> wrong mistake. No more. So, love is... Number one is action. Love is action. And this is an action. Action that starts from the heart of God is unconditional. The love of God, number one, is unconditional. It starts from the heart of God. So the aim of this action is to fulfill the purpose of God and God's action was to give His Son. You know, He, he has that decision already that He loves us. So now what is the action of God? You know, when God saw that man need salvation, man need uh, to, uh, he needs to, to bridge the gap between God and, uh, you know, and uh, man, there is a big gap called sin. God did not just tell, okay, jump, jump, jump. No. What he did? God sent his son. Now he sent his son to preach the God. That is the action of God. Amen. He loved and he made an action. For example, somebody is, uh, you know, somebody is uh, telling you, uh, brother or sister, I don't have food. Uh, I did not eat this morning. Or for three days already, I am not eating because I don't have money. So you love that person. So you tell him, okay, you are hungry. Okay, let's go and eat. That is your option. If you love a person, are you hungry? Yes, brother. Okay, see you later. It's a love. It's action. So love must be followed by action. God, because of His love to us, yes. and He saw the need, so He sent Jesus to bridge that gap and to provide for us. So if you love a person, you have to know and see what he needs, and you will give him what he needs, according to your capacity. Yes. Do not give beyond your capacity. No, don't give it. <laughs> so be more, it's okay, but no, it, you will suffer. So in your capacity, help a person. So when you love them, tell them that I can help you. I can do this for you. Do not just, for example, somebody is uh, asking for prayer. Pastor, my, uh, my father uh, is in the hospital. So now how, how is we show our love? We pray for him or pray for her. And secondly, we give help. That's why some of our, our, our sisters, when their father died, their mother died, we not just we sympathize with your sister. We really cry for you because of your low loss. Your, your mother died. Your your father is like this. Say so later. No. We take offering. We give to them as a help. That is how what. That is how we show our love. Amen. Not just by speaking. You know, there is something different with the sympathy and empathy. Yes. Sympathy is just since. Sympathizing him in his in, in, the, in his problem, but empathy is different. You move into his life and be a part of his problem. 
That is empathy. You know, sometimes we, we show sympathy for people, but we don't have empathy. We just wish them condolence, sister. Condolence, brother. Until, by that time, you sympathize. But when you will condolence, sister, here is something for you to help your family. That is empathy. You step into his life and give a part, you know, and, and live a part with him, as a part of him. Amen. So, love is an action. Number two, love is commitment. God made a commitment to save us. How? He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ. So, love takes the personality of Jesus Christ as He thinks, as He feels, and He decides for Him. You know, you know it's, it's so hard for Jesus Christ. Being God and being man, to be sent on earth and to suffer. You know? He is God. He must, he must be worshipped. He must receive adoration, praise, worship. But when He came, it's like he, His Godhead, you know, Godship is what's removed from Him. And when He was on earth, He was mocked, ridiculed, and He suffered a lot. That is love and that is commitment. You know, when we see the commitment of Jesus Christ, this commitment was not even affected by all the suffering that He has. Hindi siya namin Jesus Christ na, ang sakit-sakit na, ayaw ko na. I will stop from here. When Jesus Christ was carrying the cross, and He was about to climb the mountain called Calvary, He was walking and people are hitting Him with a cross in His uh, shoulder. No, he did not say, I cannot do it anymore. Because Jesus Christ is committed to do the will of God in his life. To do what the Lord wants for him. That was love. That is commitment. He did it for you and for me. So, Kalawa, about joy. Joy is a deep inward reaction to the love and the goodness of God. Joy is only experienced by a person through the Holy Spirit. Happiness is given by the world. Yes, we are happy. Like when you have a New Year, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. When you have birthday, Happy Birthday. Happiness is produced by things around you. By the, uh, like if you have finances, if you have material things, if you have good life, then you are happy. But joy is different. Joy comes from the Holy Spirit and it is the fruit of the Spirit. You know, when you are serving the Lord and you are truly serving the Lord, you will feel joy in your heart. Amen. The joy of serving Him. If you are serving God, you know, the joy that you will feel is immeasurable. Even if you will climb many mountains, you know, the missionaries working in the mountains, it is a hard work. When you climb the mountains and go there and, and preach the word of God without expecting anything, you did not have a, a, a signal, wala lahat. You will, uh, you will go uh, by the waters, you will climb high mountains. And no, if you are not feeling joy, I believe you will not go there. When I was young, I, I, was, uh, I experienced going with my uh, uncle who is a pastor. And we will travel from uh, in uh, North Cotabato, uh, Libungan, Libungan Alamada. It will go to the mountains, you know. And when we, uh, when we start walking, it's like 7 p.m. And all the time in the Philippines, raining. Every time. It's always raining in the Philippines. So we have to walk from 7 p.m. up to 1 a.m. So, naglalakad ka sa gitna ng kagubatan with all the uh, putik, you know, put the mud in your feet. Then, ang masakit dyan, when you're walking, then maputi, di ba? Then you step in the mud, tapos mayroon bato. Ang sakit-sakit talaga. You will feel hurt. But, you know, 
you, uh, you climb the mountain, you bring guitar, you bring uh, some of your food, you bring your dress, because you're going to that area where you can share the word of God. You know, we have a lot of people who are in the world. We have a lot of people who are Oh, the world. But the Philippines are in the world. It's a big problem. You're in my country. When you're walking, and the, pe the people will tell you, oh, is it near already? Yeah, it's already there. <laughs> just a just, uh, little uh, forward. No, if, if, if you say like that, it is a big problem. Lalo yung mga tagabundok, ayun na po. Pag tinanong mo sila, saan yung bahay nyo? Saan lang sa unahan? Ayun lang yung mountain pala yun. So, when we are walking like 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 6 hours walking under the rain, and the, the, you know, the wind is so strong, yung gitara ko, gumagano'n-ganon pa. Kasi yun na, ano na siya ng hangin. But when we reach them, and we join the brothers and the sisters worshiping the Lord in the morning, you feel the joy of serving the Lord. Yes. You feel it. Sabihin mo, walang kapag tayo pang ino. Yung joy. There's no, you cannot measure the joy when you are serving the Lord. No, when you are a pastor, when you are a worship leader, when you are a, even a member, or coming to the church, when you go home, iba iba yung nararapakiram ka mo. But kahit every Friday, you go to church, but you are not tired. You go with the people around you, you have fellowship with your brothers and your sisters, you hear the sister one crying because of a problem, and you pray for her, then when you go home, you are refreshed, energized. Again, for the next week, no, parang yung battery mo is full charge because of your your service to the Lord. And while you're serving to the Lord, the joy of salvation you will feel. Because, yeah, the joy of your salvation. We have one song of, uh, you know, of uh, David. Sabi niya, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Restore unto me, Lord, the joy of my salvation. The joy of serving the Lord. You know, and also in uh, Matthew 5, verse 21, the Bible says there that uh, there is joy that comes up of wanting to please the Lord through service. There is a joy that increase, increases in proportion to the sufferings we endure as we obey Jesus. There is a joy that comes despite insults and persecution. There is a joy of serving God. Now, when you, when you feel that you are already, you receive persecutions because of your faith, then rejoice. Rejoice if you are being persecuted. If you, if you feel insult, if you are insulted and you receive a lot of negative things because of your faith, rejoice. Amen. Sometimes, pastor, I am a church. I am a church. I am when people are doing this for you, rejoice because you are serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because you are serving the Lord. Amen. The joy of serving the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 25 verse 21. Pasayin po natin. Matthew 5 verse 21. When you give uh, when you are given by God talents and you use it for the Lord, then the Lord will tell you this. You have heard that it was said to those old. Matthew 15, 15 verse 21. Yeah, I would like to share this to you because when you have uh, you know, joy in your heart, when you have joy in serving the Lord, this is the Lord will give to you. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So when the Lord has given to you talents, has given to you things that He wants you to invest, then you use it for God's glory. 
even if you have uh, businesses, if you have uh, good, uh, you know, uh, talents that God wants to use in His ministry, and you use it for His glory and honor, you know what the Lord will say? Enter into the joy of your Lord, to the joy of your Master. So your joy will not be paid on earth. Sabi ng Panginoon, if you are, kung kaya mong hawakan yung maliliit na bagay, bibigay ng pagin sa iyo mga malaking bagay. So the joy of the Lord is something that you acquire through your service unto Him. Number three, peace. Malapit na tayo. Nine yun, di ba? Tapos na tayo sa tatlo. Okay. Peace. Peace is a deep inward rest of one's spirit as he comes and surrenders himself to the Lord Jesus. True peace is the result of receiving the light of Christ and it is the work of the Holy Spirit. Peace grows as we will be Jesus. There is, a, there is complete peace at every at the very center of God's will under the yoke of Jesus. So now, you know, when you want to do a decision in your life, you have to test it. Meron tayo tinatawag na tester, you know? If you want to test the waters, you know, sometimes when you say a lake and the water is so calm, you want to see if there's a crocodile, you want to test the water, right? You have to put some chicken and the road will never go out. So you have to test, you know? Also, when in your making a decision, or if you want to make a major decision, you need to test. The tester is peace. Amen. If you have peace in whatever things that you will do, if you have joy and peace in whatever decision that you will do, then that is the will of God. If you don't have peace and all the things go wrong and all the things is already getting crazier and crazier every day, do not do it. That is wrong. That is a mistake. Why? There's no peace. So you test your Lord, Lord, this decision is correct. Am I doing this when you have peace in your heart? And joy, go for it. It is the will of God. Amen. Amen. Many things, many decisions of our lives. So we know, I was so good about for good. For example, I want to for good to, the, to my country. Ang tanong, my peace of mind ka ba? Are you at peace when you go for good? Pagdating mo dun, may kakainin ba kami? Do I have a business? Do I have, uh, meron ba akong ipon? Do I have resources? Do I have something to support my family when I went to the Philippines? Yes. First of all, you have to prepare, right? Yeah. Prepare, prepare ka na, may inipon ka na, may bahay ka na, may sasakyan ka na, may negosyo ka na sa Pilipinas. Then, later on, talagay mo sa lili mo. Do I have peace? Okay? So, I think, kaya na. Diba? So, you can do it for good. But when you are troubled, even if thinking kailangan mo mag-for good, ah, may problema sa Pilipinas, don't go home yet. It's not yet your time to go home. Amen? Amen. If you are, for example, if you want to get married, if this person is giving you too much problem, it's not the way of God. Why? There's no joy. There's no peace. No, when you have peace with that person, you feel the joy, and you know that one day, even if things will go wrong, He will be there for you. That is the will of God. So, mga singles, amen. This is Jonah, sabi niya. Praise the Lord. So, peace is a tester, and that peace is a fruit of the Spirit. Now, real peace, meron dun sa ano, sa Mindanao, sabi, sa mga Muslims, ha? Muslim areas. In, in our country, there are Muslim areas. Like in Otabato, uh, in Danao, and uh, somewhere in the Pagadia, <laughs> yung mga area na yan. Diba? Or in Otabato, papunta doon sa Sultan Kudera, ang Patuan area. These are Muslim areas. And then, you know, when, uh, when Porter went to, there to, to, to investigate and to interview the commander of the MIT, Said, Commander, uh, how is the peace and order here in your place? 
ay maraming fish dito pero wala water <laughs> lot of fish fish and it, fish but no order pero ang sabi niya oh, kamusta ko yung fish and order dito sa ano sa Mindanao sabi niya sa commander wala nangyayari dito sa Mindanao pa lahat din ang nagkakagira dito paano magkakaroon ng fish eh, yung mga military ayaw mag surrender <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I will tell you about real peace. You know, sa dagat, mayroong bagyo. Iba ko alam lang, there's a lot of strong wind, and the waves are so strong. You no, know, there's a raging, roaring wave. And you know, sa ilalim ng bato, mayroon doon isang ibon. There's one bird that is peaceful. That is peace. In the middle of you know trouble, in the middle of the suffering, difficulties, and struggles, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will have peace. Amen. You have peace. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, even if you stay in a mansion. Even if you stay in a room, air-conditioned room, good house, but you don't have Jesus in your life, your heart will be full of trouble. Your heart will, will never, you can never sleep. Even if you have a lot of money, you know, a lot of money, it will cause you a lot of trouble. Why? Because you think somebody will come in, somebody will make robbery in my house, somebody will kill me, and all these things, you will, it will give you trouble. But real peace is a peace that comes from the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, number, secondly, long suffering. As I told you before, the suffering, the patience that Jesus has, He wants to give it to you also. Sino na ba dito yung ilang bisis ng nasaktan, nasaktan, nagdugo ang puso, nasaktan pa rin, nasaktan pa rin? Di ba marami ka lang? The many times we suffer, many times we are hurt, people uh, hurt us not only once, two times, three times, four times, five times. But still, we suffer, we, we understand. Because we have patience, right? We have that patience. So if whenever things will go wrong, good on the at it. But when we have no suffering, you know, sometimes it's so hard to work with with the house, you know, sa bahay, mga sa bahay, especially yung mga amo ninyo na hindi maintindihan yung ugali, napakahirap. But because we are here for the job, we are here to earn the money, we are here to, to earn in order to support our families, we come here to submit, to respect them. Amen. Amen. So you have, to, you have to develop that long suffering. Most Christians na mga nakilala ko na mga uh, nagtatrabaho sa bahay, they finish their contract without any problem. Pero yung ibang mga hindi Christians, you have that attitude na kung pinagalitan ng amo, magagalit din sila. <laughs> Pag hindi binigyan ng day off, magagalit din sila. Because you don't have long suffering. You don't have the patience that comes from the Holy Spirit. But only those who have the Holy Spirit, and those who have the fruit of the Spirit in their lives, they can endure. Amen? You will endure. You will really say, but sometimes, Pastor, pasensya na ilaw ako church because we, I don't have a uh, day off. But still, when I have the uh, pastor, mag-church pa ako. Then, di ba, ganun na ang buhay natin dito. Ano na siya, paikot-ikot lang yun. And just continue to, to do it for the glory of the Lord. And then one day, the Lord will reward you of your long suffering, of your patience. Number, next one is gentleness. Gentleness is being kind, caring, and sensitive to the needs and feelings of others. It always associated with something soft and smooth. Being gentle is something that we develop. No? Gentleness. Gentleman, sometimes not gentle. Ladies and gentlemen. Are you sure that all the men are gentle? No. But gentleness is a fruit of spirit. Being kind, being gentle. Now sometimes when you go by bus, and the, the women are standing, the gentlemen sitting. <laughs> the sitting, no? Does it call gentlemen? No. Sometimes you have to offer your seat. Uh, Lola, 
Ate, umupo po kayo. Matanda na po kayo. Ako, bata pa. Nag-alit yung, ba't mo siya na lang matanda? So, gentleness is a, is, you know, is a thing that we, uh, that we show to people. Caring upon them. We care upon them. We are sensitive of their feelings. And we, we also uh, sensitive with their needs. Not only with their feelings, with their needs also. Next one is goodness. Goodness is the trait that details defeat all kinds of evil. So, <laughs> do not, sabi ng Bible, do not repay evil with evil, but repay evil with good. This is the strongest weapon to defeat all evil. Goodness. Goodness does not tolerate evil, but it overcomes evil. Why God is good even to the wicked? Because God loves them even if they are wicked. In Romans 2.24, God goodness, God's goodness leads to repentance. Sometimes you're wondering why sabi mo pastor, yung mga mga ano, mga masasarang tao, they don't go to church, and yet they have a lot of money. They have good businesses. Do not judge them. Because the goodness of God will lead you to repentance. Sometimes when you will feel, bakit? Ang dami kong ginawang mali, kahit na marami akong ginawa, pinibless pa ako ng Panginoon, then one day you will come to the Lord. Because as the Bible says, or do you despise the riches of His goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. So sometimes, God is doing good to you every time. And even if you are doing wrong things, God is still good to you. So one day, you realize that I need to go to the Lord. You repent of your bad attitude of the things that you are doing that is wrong. Because the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Sometimes people, kailangan muna nila mag-repent bago sila i-bless. No. Sometimes God is blessing you because He wants you to repent. Then when you see the blessings of God, di ba? Marami sa atin. Many of us, we are doing bad things. Bad, uh, you know, wrong decisions. But in our wrong decisions, God still loved us and is still blessing us. What is the purpose of God? He wants you to repent. Because you realize how blessed you are. Yun ibig sabihin ito. The goodness of God will lead you to repentance. Amen. So we have last three, and I will make it very fast. We have faith. Okay. This faith is the one that overcomes the world. As the believer continues to trust the word of God, despite contrary circumstances, trials, and suffering in his faith grows, he will continue to serve the Lord. As his faith grows. One other example of faith is Stephen. Stephen was a full of faith and the Holy Spirit. You know, Stephen, when he was stoned to death, and you know who stoned to death and who gave the authority? Saul. Saul gave the command that Stephen be stoned to death. But, you know, Stephen, he just lay out, he just faced the people. A man full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. He's full of faith. He's not afraid to die. He didn't have even afraid to be stoned. Why? Because he has the faith that even if he dies, he will go to the Father. That's faith. That's the strength of a person needs it. We need it. You know, when you go to, uh, when you serve the Lord, you need faith. Sometimes our president, is asking, you know, our president of the Philippines, sometimes he called God stupid. And all the media, the why, like, why, but why is this uh, stupid? And one day, one, one time or so, he said to the media, if any of you can produce a selfie with God, I will believe. <laughs> Imagine how stupid it is. You want to believe, and you need a selfie. Anybody who can make a selfie with God and show to him, this is the uh, God. Then you will believe. There's no faith in that. True faith 
believes even if you don't see. Amen. 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 That is faith. That's why we Christians, we believe. We believe that Jesus Christ was uh, crucified on the cross. We believe that Jesus Christ died. We believe that he was buried. We believe that the, the third day he rose again. And we believe that he went to heaven. We believe that his blood cleansed our sins. We believe that he is the Son of God. We believe that through his death we will receive life. We believe that if we receive him as personal and Savior, we will go to, the, to heaven. That is faith. Don't be like Thomas. I want to see. I want to see the hole in your palm. And after that, Jesus, you know, Jesus showed his hand. And Thomas put his finger and he said, You are the Son of God. And he believed. But the Lord said, You believe because you saw. Because of that, you touch, you believe. But blessed are those who believe even if they don't see. That is faith. Amen. Last, um, second to the last, meekness. Meekness is the willing acceptance of God's dealing of our lives. When the Lord is teaching you, you can accept it. When the Word of God is telling you to do this, accept it. That's meekness. Meekness is is a is a synonym synonym to humility. Low in spirit, meek. Amen. So it is a yielded. Uh, attitude toward God, to, toward the will of God. When God is telling you to go here, you yield to His will. That is meekness. Submission. That is meekness. And lastly, self-control or temperance. It is a subject, no? Subjecting our desires or our physical desires Subjecting it and presenting it to God as a living sacrifice. You tell the Lord, Lord, I want to submit to you everything in me. And use me, Lord God. I am available to your service. Amen. That is doing it self-control. You know, if you can give everything to the Lord, you can control it because the Lord will control over you. Sabi ng Panginoon, hindi ko kaya. Tao lang ako. Marupok. Madaling. Makalimot. Tama. That is true. Sabi ng Panginoon, kaya sabi ko nga sa'yo, cast all your cares upon me. Come to me, all who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me. Give unto me. I will take all of your problems, of your difficulties, of your sufferings, and even your struggles. Sometimes it's hard to struggle when you are doing it yourself. But if you give it to the Lord, you no know, self-control is, you know, is a result, is a fruit of the Spirit. Don't say that, kaya ko to. Pag sinabi mo kaya mo yan, pag sabi mo pala, nagpaka na. Sabi mo, Lord, I can do it by your grace. Panginoon, yes. kaya ko to dahil sa'yo. Hindi yung kaya ko to, Lord. Huwag ka din magkailan, kaya ko to. <laughs> yung pala pagsabi mo na yan, alam na ng Panginoon na lumapak ka na. Lord, Lord, I repent. Sorry, Lord. Hindi ko kaya na. Sabi mo ng Pato, apart from Him, we can do nothing. Apart from the Lord, we can do nothing. In all aspects of our lives, especially in temptation, we can do nothing except the Lord will help us. So self-control is uh, a, a trait that is not to be developed, but allow the Holy Spirit to control it to you. And what you do is develop your yielding unto Him. You know, pag mayroon temptation, lumalik sa Panginoon. You know what G uh, Joseph did when he was uh, tempted by uh, by the wife of Potiphar. Anong ginawa ni Joseph? Tumakbo siya. He ran away. So that is self-control. Hindi mo sabihin na, for example, mayroong invite sa'yo, bro or sis, magano tayo, gimmick tayo. Kaya ko to. Saan ba ka naman doon? Diba? You put yourself into a situation 
Then, they're not telling me, you know, problem sa atin. Sabi, kaya ko to, I can't handle myself. You know, pag ginawa natin yun, minsan, nahuhulog tayo. It's because you put yourself into a situation that there's no turning back. For example, sa babae at talaki. So, dito, so, kaya ko to. Pwede naman kami yung ano eh, sa loob ng kwarto, dalawa lang kami. Kaya ko to. Yes, kaya mo yan. Ilang araw, ilang oras. After that, you will fail. Because you put yourself into a situation that uh, yung ibang mag-aakaw yung, ano, yung dalawang part natin. Yung spiritual at yung physical natin. And sometimes, we go like this. Because we put our, our life into that situation. So to, to develop self-control, you have to avoid. Diba? Sabi nila, Pastor, ano ba gawin ko kung anong temptation? Do nothing. Wala pa mangyayari? Wala. Because you did nothing. Stay there. Do nothing. Don't touch. Don't, <laughs> don't do it. So, huwag kang mangyayari sa'yo. If you do nothing, wala mo nagagawa. Wala talaga nangyayari kasi you did nothing. Amen. So self-control is a part of the Spirit and only the Holy Spirit can give this trait unto you. Amen. Lastly, the Holy Spirit transforms the believers into the image of Jesus. Amen. He transforms us into the image of Jesus Christ. As what we can see in 2 Corinthians 3.18. No, the image of Jesus will reflect into us. The believer must cooperate by surrendering to Jesus. So we surrender ourselves. That's why we sing the song, I surrender, I yield. Because through yielding and surrendering, God will develop and transform us into His likeness. And lastly, the Spirit produces His fruit in the surrendered life of a believer. So first of all, the believer will be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will reproduce the, the surrendered life, the fruit. This fruit will reproduce into the life of the believers by surrendering to Jesus and lastly, the Spirit reproduces its fruit if you are surrendered already. So, sa buhay natin mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, if you want to develop maturity in your life, and the fruit of the Spirit. Yung nakita naman natin, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, meekness, temperance, self-control. If you want to develop this, first of all, surrender your life. Inihindi ko ang lahat na magsitayo po tayo. And we'll come to the Lord in prayer. Asking the Lord, Lord, allow your Holy Spirit to move, to flow into my life. And I want, Lord, to become mature. Because Lord, unless I am mature, the fruit of the Spirit is not visible in my life. So today, Lord, once again, I want to offer my life unto you. I will yield, Lord, that I surrender. And I will give everything into your hands, Lord, today. I would like to sing this song, Lord of all. I want to back up to sing this song in a very solid manner. And as you sing this song, I invite everyone to raise your hand before the Lord. Raise your hand and say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. I will yield to God. Father, in my own strength and abilities, I cannot do it, Lord. In my own strength, Lord, in my own power, First of all, I don't have any of that word. But today, Lord God, I want to surrender. I want to heal you, Lord God. I want to give my life unto you, Lord God.
because you know what is good for us. You know, Lord, what is best for us. And Father, this morning, 